Sage for a second here, and today we're looking at Scope. And of course, Scope uh, is the last of Wave 2A that I had to get uh, and then make a video for. That means that Series 2 right here is, of course, the FDO mech with Churro, Scope, and of course, Torn. Now, um, obviously, uh, Truthfully, I'm not sure how much I'm going to like Scope. I like the bot base body, but being a sniper rifle user, I don't know how he could possibly use his lone sniper rifle without something to prop it on when he doesn't have elbow or knee articulation or ankle articulation to hold him up. So we're going to have to see how that works. Uh, as far as the base figure, of course, the fact he has holsters, for both of his guns, he has a backpack that'll peg in, and then the gun pegs into the backpack. It's a really cool design, and the gun can peg right into his back if you were to lose the backpack or something like that. But that's not really how it's designed to go. Okay, we're going to take him out of the package, so let me pause the video. Okay, so we will start with the figure. My figure does have a little paint issue here. Uh, be sure to look at your figures when you're buying them. I do have a couple more of them, so it's not that big a deal. I was a little excited and didn't look too closely because I was like, He's here! He exists! But uh, I should have known better. Uh, I can take that off probably just with sandpaper or whatever. Um, the armor is really cool looking. They did a great job of doing a two-tone armor um, with metallic paints. I really like the metallic paints. There's not much metallic on the back except down with the calves. Uh, but, you know, he does look like an armored figure. Um, he does have his two holsters on his hip. His uh, head does turn. If you haven't seen the Final Faction, they are basically five points of articulation. They have uh, old Star Wars style articulation. You know, the arm spins around. Uh, but much better um, sculpting, in my opinion. Uh, the legs come forward. There are peg holes on the feet. Uh, and, of course, I wish they put out figure stands since they have peg holes on the feet. But that's uh, maybe that's some Wave 2B. Um, there's riding on his shoulder here. There is a place to peg in his backpack here. So let's try that. Now, the thing about the backpack is... You peg it in sideways, it looks like that wouldn't look the way the gun width is. If I had it the way I originally started to put it, the way the gun width is, that would not have worked. I had to turn it this way, so the peg is on this side, so that the scope and everything of the gun doesn't cause any problems. You can see it fits right there on his back. <clears throat> Now, I kind of thought it'd be cool if they'd done some sort of over-the-shoulder, kind of like they did with Ruck. But, uh, you know, all, all things said, you can stand the figure up even with the backpack on. You can see he does stand on his own. No weird half-hour posing or anything, which is one strength of, of course, you can knock him over real easy, too. One strength of the five points of articulation is that if you do it right they should be able to stand up <laughs> if on a level surface without much help uh, so this is of course scope let's go ahead and look at his guns now some people have said that the holsters it's this way uh, are a little loose on theirs mine look like they're pretty tight like that gun is staying in there no problem let me try the other side Yeah, mine's going in there just fine. It's not falling out or anything. So it is a matter of, I've been told that if you heat it up with water or whatever, you can fix it if it does have that problem. Um, you know, just by heating it up, squeezing these closed without the guns in them, and then putting the guns in them after it's cooled down. Because uh, that'll tighten up the, the rubber plastic right here. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, all together, it feels pretty solid. Um, 
The Wave 1 figures do feel a little more stiff as far as the plastic goes, but that can be a bad thing as well as a good thing. So, um, I think this is a great figure. Um, and now we're going to try to pause it so I can put the guns in his hands and everything. Uh, looking at the guns, they do go in the hands okay, but interestingly enough, I have a like a discrepancy with mine. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little string of plastic coming off the front of the barrel on mine. Um, obviously, I can clip that off. I got some flat clippers that are especially for models and stuff that work really good for cutting plastic uh, flat. And I'll have no worry about messing it up. Uh, so that won't be a problem, though. I'm sure someone with just a pair of scissors could clean that up. Anyway, uh, so the pistols are no problem. They do stay in the hands pretty good. You can see I'm shaking the figure. The guns are staying in the, in the hand. Even though I did shake the figure. Now let's try the rifle. Okay, so... I mean, I'll eat a little crow here because this guy is able to stand and hold the gun. But that is not a natural way to hold a sniper rifle. Um, and I'm not having to do any special blue tack or anything to get him to stand up. You know, so uh, that's pretty cool uh, as far as that goes. And, you know, so he can at least hold his guns uh, without much effort. Let me put this, put this arm down. Of course, I can knock it out of his hand. This one is not as secure as the pistols in the hand. It can go in both hands. They did sculpt it to be able to go in either hand. Though I think it fits better in the left hand. I mean the right hand. Because the left hand, it feels really loose. Yeah, so. Like I said. The sniper rifle is, you know, pretty cool looking. It's got some sci-fi looking sniper rifle design. And I'm sure some people with other figures might just use it for their other figures. Anyway, this has been my video for Scope. Uh, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And as always, pour on the plastic.